everybody. Welcome to this Lightroom tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about color grading a portrait, kind of playing around with the tones of the portrait as well, um, without really getting into like the deep retouching and worrying about skin and, you know, compositing and all that junk. We're just going to play with the color and really try to get like a deep, moody portrait. Now, obviously, it all begins with having decent light. You can't take a snapshot from a, you know, $50 camera with the on-camera flash and, you know, then expect to have some rich cinematic portrait. It does begin with the light and has a lot to do with the lighting and the environment and the ambient light and everything like that. Um, but the principles stand true for any photo, whether it's shot under studio light or in the middle of the night, in the middle of the urban setting somewhere you can still use these principles to tweak and color tone your photos and obviously the lighting of your images is completely up to you and that's where you kind of do your thing but this is how I like to color grade my images and just generally my approach so what I have here is uh, a shoot that I did with a friend of mine Natalie and uh, we just it's simple one or two, actually it's two lights I'm sorry we had a front light and then just an edge light uh, lighten up just for some of these photos now these photos only have one light it was one front soft box that we had lighting her up um, but a couple of these shots there was also a hair light in there uh, but for the most part one light I think I want to take this photo here uh, because I think it lends itself very much to looking pretty cinematic so I want to try to color grade this and have a little bit of fun with it and just go over some of the techniques that I like to use now one of the things that I'll do to get things started is just come over here to the detail tab and throw some sharpness onto here make sure that it's just tack sharp I uh, shot this with the Canon's 135 f2L lens, which I think has got to be the sharpest Canon lens uh, that's out there. It's just amazing. Handheld. Uh, it's really, really great. One one hundredth of a second, the whole bit. Uh, so what I did was I just cranked the sharpness up to about 100. Uh, and then what I like to do is hold down my Alter Option key and mess with the radius to kind of get a good idea of where I'm falling with my radius. And then also detail to make sure that I'm picking up some of the smaller details. And then with masking to make sure that I'm not just sharpening a bunch of noise out in these big areas of color. So I'm holding down my Alter Option key when I use that slider. And just the white areas are what are going to be affected by the sharpening. So all the black areas, like all the big solid colors, I'm not going to be sharpening and therefore intensifying the noise out there. So that's the first thing I like to do. After that, I usually like to head right to the tone curve and begin messing around with stuff. I've got my little faint a histogram back there, which is a compressed version of the big guy up here. Um, I, th I think I want to lift the shadows a little bit. So I'm going to grab the black point and just lift it just a little tiny bit. But the, the highlights are also a little hot on her face. So I'm going to pull down on the white point as well, kind of until like I feel I have them under control. This is going to have the sum total outcome being uh, the, an image with lower contrast. So if I hit the, the switch here, you can see we're just killing off contrast. That's the result of what we're doing here. So I want to drag down to introduce a, a few more darks and drag up to introduce a few more brights or just intensify the brights a little bit and therefore just increase the contrast that we've killed off a little bit. So we're just kind of killing off a little contrast. Uh, I'm going to select RGB here and go to my red channel. And I think what I need to do is think about reducing reds in her face. Uh, so I'm actually going to use the little scrubby tool here. And I'm going to pull down on the reds in her face. I'm just going to pull down, not too much, just a little bit, something like that. And then I'm going to go to the greens. And I think I'm going to try pulling down on the greens in her face. You see how that immediately starts to make the skin tone look so magenta. Remember, magenta is the opposite of green. Cyan is the opposite of red. So when we pull down on the green, we're introducing magenta into our image. Pull up on green. Obviously, you're introducing green. Um, but if we pull down on this just, I mean, just a little bit, you got to be really careful that you don't start making her skin look all purple and funkified. It's really bad. There we go. That looks pretty good. Um, and maybe for some of the shadows here, we actually want to push a little bit of green back into them. Just a little bit, though. You want to be really, really subtle. So we're just, we're just using this tool here. And basically, you pull down to pull green out and push up to introduce green. Now we're just going crazy with our curve. Let's double click to just get rid of that dot that we, or the anchor point we placed that we really don't want. Uh, let's go down to the blue channel. And here I'm thinking... Um, we definitely want to pump a little bit more blue into the shadows, I think, but I want some yellow to fall into her face, but I want to be careful that like the shadows here underneath her hair don't start to look all mucky and, you know, greenish brownish yellow, which I know is going to happen if I pull up, if I pull down on blue, the yellow is the opposite of blue. Um, well, you know what, actually, it's not too, too bad. You can see if I pull too far, it really starts to look bad, but that looks bad all over. So I know that that's just excessive. All right, let's try this again. Let's just pull this down a little bit. 
There we go. We're starting to get like nice, rich skin tones. Um, and I think what I want to do, I'm going to grab the bottom, the, the black point, if you will, and pull up. And that's going to introduce some blues into the shadows. Now, what I need to be careful of is the, the contrast now between the blue in the shadows and the yellow I've introduced into her face is really making her face look a little too yellow. So I want to take some of that yellow back. That actually looks pretty cool. Uh, let's go back to the reds again. I want to, I think, pull down on the very highlight point to get rid of reds in the, the brightest part of the image. Maybe let's just try, just for the fun of it. Oh, I'm gonna double click to get rid of those points. I don't want that. I'm gonna drag up to introduce red into the shadows. That actually adds a certain element of richness to the photo. Whoop, <laughs> don't do that. Um, and I keep adding extra points that I don't want. Let's try that again. I'm gonna pull this over this way and that's gonna introduce cyan into the, the shadows, which actually, that kind of like makes it, it makes the photo feel more gritty. If we introduce red, not that much red, Let's undo that. There we go. If I pull up on this, introducing more red it tends to give the image more warmth and more like, I don't know, more comfortable feeling. But adding just a little bit of cyan to the shadows just gives it like this gritty feeling. Like all of a sudden she's, you know, on the deck of a cruise ship in the middle of like, a, or, or that, that will soon be in the middle of a freezing, you know, storm on the ocean. Uh, somewhere in the, I don't know, North Atlantic or something. Um, so I kind of like that. I kind of like pulling a little bit of cyan. Or cyan is the opposite of red. So when we pull down or away from uh, that middle point, it's going to introduce cyan, the opposite of red. Hey guys, let's break up the monotony of just going through this color grade real quick. Well, it's not that monotonous, but you know what I'm saying. I'm selling a course all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. Link just appeared right up there in the corner of the video. If you pick up a copy, it helps support what we do here on tutvid.com. I'd be greatly appreciated. If not, hey, the tutorial's still free. Let's get back into it. So after I play with the curves, and by the way, there's before our curves, there's after our curves. You can see we've done a lot with the curves. I like to go and tweak uh, the general white balance and exposure here. So I still think her face is a bit bright. So I would probably start attacking the highlights in the image and just kind of knock them down a little bit. But I want to be careful because if I go down too far, it really, I mean, she looks horrible and the whole image looks just atrocious. So I just want to do it very subtly, negative five. And same thing with the whites, knock it down, negative five, negative 10, something very subtle. And I can... Uh, tweak the overall white balance as well. Do I want to make the image more blue, more orange? Um, I think heading, you know, closer to like the 4,800, yeah, 4,800, 4,900 uh, temperature-wise works great. Maybe I want some purple. I definitely don't want any green. Eh, I'm going to leave the tint slider where it is. I'm not going to mess with it. Plus two is is good for me. I don't want any clarity. Clarity is going to give me like this effect. I just don't, I don't want that. What I may do is boost the vibrance just a little bit. I may come back here later and decide, you know what, I actually want to reduce the vibrance. It's all going to depend on how her skin tone is looking as we kind of push our way through this. The next place I normally go is to camera calibration. Camera calibration is really cool because you can choose totally different profiles. So I can go like uh, camera uh, camera neutral, excuse me, which is just going to give me a little bit more dynamic range generally. I can infuse my shadows with some magenta, which is really cool here. Green I think is going to be a bit much, but I think the, the purple is going to mesh well with the blue that we introduced in our uh, tone curve, so that's cool. And then we can do things like shifting the hue of the primary red, green, and blue in the image as well as adjust that side. Saturation. So I can just see here, you know, really shift my reds over toward the magentas or toward the orange. You can see it just does really, really bad things. But like a slight shift toward the orange might be kind of cool and really pumping up or maybe really decreasing. I think really decreasing the saturation does good things for me there. Same thing for the greens. I can just keep an eye on what they're doing. And remember, green, when I pull it back this way, goes green. When I push it this way, it's giving me more of like a magenta red color. I think I want, I like the magenta red. If I push up the saturation, meh. Push up the saturation just a little bit. And then for the blues, greenish yellow, and then kind of this reddish funky uh, color. I don't know. I'm not going to mess with the blue too much, I don't think. Maybe I'll desaturate it a little bit because there's a lot of blue coming through in the background. So I'm going to desaturate that a little bit. And you can see there is before camera calibration, there's after. It's just all, it's all about the subtleties here with the color grading stuff and really getting a nice cinematic look. Um, I want to go back to basic. I think I want to decrease the overall contrast to the photo, maybe like negative 20, negative 15, and maybe decrease overall brightness as well. That's going to help control some of that light falling on her face. And I would probably do something about some of the flyaways in her hair, but again, we're not messing around with retouching. We're going to stick with uh, the color grading stuff here that we're playing with. Uh, so saturation, maybe a little kick in the saturation helps us out a little bit. The next thing I want to go to is the HSL slider. So this is really where you can control the skin. You can either use the, the, the slider tool here. We can just click and drag up or down 
and we can adjust the hue of like the skin tones. If we think there's too much red in it, we can, uh, you know, well, we're pulling down, therefore pulling more red into the skin. But if we push up, we're going to increase the orange, push, thus pushing it toward yellow, uh, which I really don't like in this case. I don't really think that skin tone needs to be changed. We come down here and this is going to adjust the purples and blues a little bit. You can see how it's kind of working in unison and make those a little bit more blue and purple. That's cool. I'm more interested in the saturation here because I kind of think if we take a little bit of saturation out of the reds and oranges in our face, uh, it'll do really good things for us and maybe pump up some saturation in the blues in the background. All right. So again, we can see there's before there's after extraordinarily subtle uh, luminance wise. You know, again, we could work on her skin a little bit and just pull down the oranges, yellows, maybe even the reds. We can go in manually and just say, you know what, drop some of the, the brightness factor of the reds. Uh, that's cool. Uh, and you, you can spend as much or as little time as you want in uh, hue saturation uh, and luminance. Uh, but most of my work is done in hue and saturation. And a very little bit happens over in luminance as well. Uh, but very, very powerful tool here in uh, Adobe Lightroom. And I think last but not least, let's apply a little split toning to really accentuate the blue in the shadows. Now, I'm either going to love this or I'm going to hate it. I'm going to go with like a blue. I, I already, I hate it. It's way too strong. So let's crank it back to like 20. Uh, and you can see we can control this saturation here. We can just control it on the, the slider as well. So we can go hue saturation. Maybe I can make it very saturated, but then control the balance. So primarily the highlights are being uh, attacked or primarily pushed through in the shadows here. Eh, I, just, I really have to reduce the saturation a lot. There's before, there's after. I mean, it does take a little bit of the warming edge off the shadowy parts of the image, so I kind of dig it. I really think I need to come back into uh, the basics here and infuse a little contrast. I think reducing contrast was a bad move. So let's move that back to zero. I kind of dig it. And one last thing is tell me I should come back into my tone curve, go back to my RGB, and I really need to darken the overall image here. So I'm going to push my white point back up a little bit. I think I'm going to come out here. I'm going to pull down on this a little bit. Let me pull down on the brights up here a little bit as well. Make the overall image a little darker, right? Never hurt anyone. There we go. Something like that looks pretty cool. Yeah, and that's really just going to tone things down for us. We can even come in here to exposure uh, or hi well, highlights we don't want to mess with. Probably exposure and knock it down a couple more ticks to really get this nice, moody um, shot. We can hit the backslash key that's going to give us a total before and then after. And you can see, I mean, just some lighting changes uh, and in terms of color grading make a massive, massive difference. You can do like specific bits of change as well if you go with like the graduated filter and we want to maybe darken this back corner of the image. We set it to negative uh, 0 0.65 since that's where it was. We can just drag this up and we're going to darken that back corner of uh, the photo. Maybe make it a little bit warmer if it appears too blue. Something like that. All right, well, that's now that's way too dark. Let's go back to about, yeah, about 0 0.6 uh, looks good. Again, if we want to just take a look at the before and after the backslash key, there's before, there's after. I kind of dig it. Uh, you can always go with the crop tool, you know, level things out or crop it in a little bit more. I mean, it's already pretty cropped in there just based upon the way that uh, we shot the photo. But yeah, I mean, let me just pop this thing to full screen here. And yeah, looks pretty good. I think I like it. Whoops. Don't want to convert it to a black and white, but there's a black and white for you. Let's undo that. I just uh, hit the letter V to do that. So V will toggle you in and out of a black and white mode. It looks pretty good. It looks really good coming out of black and white. So I'm going to get out of full screen mode. And that's going to be pretty much it. We've spent some time, color graded this photo, had some fun with it. If you enjoyed the tutorial, make sure you leave a little like on it. Drop a comment below if you feel so inclined. And make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss another Photoshop or photography related tutorial on this channel ever again. For color grading an image in Lightroom and using curves and split tone adjustments and even a little sharpening, hey, why not? That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, TuckVid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.